Welcome to PGOG, postgraduate class in obstetrics and gynecology. And today's topic is man management of primary amenorrhea. It is a series of primary amenorrhea, and this is the part three. Part one was pathophysiology, part two was clinical approach to a case of primary amenorrhea. Now, last class only we have seen that we can divide the causes of primary amenorrhea as per these four levels as level 1 uterus and outflow tract, level 2 is ovary, level 3 is the disorders at the level of pituitary and level 4 are the disorders at the level of hypothalamus. What I have found in many textbooks uh, is uh, there are many flow charts which are given uh, while dealing with the case of primary amenorrhea but I find that for students it is somewhat confusing to remember the flow charts and to write or to even treat a patient according as per the flow chart. So in, in that respect, what I find that this, these four levels, dividing the causes in four levels, as well as approaching the patient, remembering the, the, that first we focus on uterus and outflow tract, then we uh, shift to the disorders of ovary, and then last is pituitary and hypothalamus. I find that even clinically also this makes it easier to come to a provisional diagnosis for a cause of primary amenorrhea and for treatment point of view also if we want to focus on various aspects because it is heterogeneous. So many conditions are responsible for primary amenorrhea. And when we, if you get a question on management of primary amenorrhea, it becomes somewhat confusing and you don't uh, know how to start or how to divide. So for that, these four levels, I think students should remember and accordingly even our thought process should also be uh, going on whenever we are dealing with a case of primary amenorrhea. Level one is uh, disorders of uterus and outflow tract. Mullerian orogenesis is most common out of uh, these. Second is androgen insensitivity syndrome. And third is all the various uh, causes which are leading to obstruction to the outflow tract. So how do, you, how do we manage Mullerian orogenesis? Here, as we know, vagina is not there. Uterus is also usually not present. So vaginal self-dilatation is the first line of treatment, which is which should be done progressive vaginal self-dilatation. And that should depends on much more on, um, on the counseling of parents, girl, that uh, whether she can proceed with the vaginal self-dilatation. It needs motivation, but it has been given in the textbooks that more than 90% of the success rate is there if it is done properly. So gradual dilatation of the vagina. And uh, there are certain devices which have been developed where a bicycle seat is used along with the uh, dilator so that there is a use of gravitational force also and that helps in the progressive vaginal dilatation. Now if it is not done and if uh, the next line of treatment comes to premarital neovagina creation then at that time it is important to even do the counseling of would-be partner also. Premarital you know, neovagina creation that is just before the marriage, six months prior to the marriage, it is advocated to be done because then the need for the uh, progressive vaginal dilatation post-operatively will be for a lesser duration and that, uh, that is how the chances of re-stenosis will be less. So first line is always a progressive self-vaginal dilatation and if it, it is not possible, then uh, we should go for a vaginoplasty or neovagina creation. We should remember that in around 10% of the patients of malaria neogenesis, though it is a very small uterus, rudimentary uterus, sometimes it is present in the center or sometimes two small knob-like structures, uh, uterus-like structures are present on off the center on both the sides. And usually the endometrium, functioning endometrium is not there, but in 10% functioning endometrium might be there and patient might present with cyclical pain. And these are the cases where there is a need to remove the uterine remnants. And uh, laparoscopically this can be removed by taking a proper care of not uh, injuring the ureters by, because the placement of these uterine remnants, it sometimes can be at the pelvic brief or even sometimes above the pelvic brief also. Socially, what is important to counsel these girls 
is to be economically independent because though we say there is a possibility of marriage sometimes it is a uh, practically it is difficult and that is why if the girl is economically independent for the rest of the life becomes easier gestational surrogacy for pregnancy is the option and now we have uterine transplant and we do read in newspapers success stories related to the uterine transplant but presently we can say that it is still in, in experimental stage here this diagram what we, we can see is this is the bladder and this is rectum and whenever we open a case or we look at the pelvis by, with the help of laparoscope in a patient of malaria nogenesis what we find is a midline rectovaginal band like structure or cord like structure is seen connecting the bladder with the rectum and usually small uterine rem remnants are present on one or on the both the sides that is the usual picture whenever we do the laparoscopy or even we do the laparotomy in a patient of malaria nogenesis now something about vaginoplasty or new vagina creation indications are malaria nogenesis androgen insensitivity syndrome vaginal nogenesis and whenever there is a thick transverse vaginal septum McIndoe skin graft technique is the most commonly practiced technique. What is done in that is a recto uh, vesicle. I'm sorry, it should be vesicle. Recto vesicle space dis dissection is done for the creation of the vagina. There is as such no space, but we are doing the dissection in the loose areolar tissue. Recto vesicle space dissection. Usually, uh, and nowadays, even hydro dissection is done so that the chances of injury to the bladder or the rectum are less. And vaginal uh, placement of the vaginal mold with screen graft is done. Other grafts which can be used apart from skin graft are bowel can be used. But here the possibility of having a mucosal discharge later on is there as uh, there can be sometimes excessive muc muc mucus discharge from the loop of a bowel. Buccal mucosa has also been used by some surgeons. Peritoneum can be used and labial folds can be used which can be inserted inside the uh, vagina. Williams vaginoplasty is vulval and perineal tissue is used to create a perineal pouch. Vichetis technique is manual quick vaginal dilatation by inserting a traction device laparoscopically. So, when a patient does a self dilatation, it takes many years, sometimes months or years also for the proper dilatation of the vagina. But here, what is done is a traction device is introduced laparoscopically, which pulls the apex of the vaginal dimple upward, and that is how it creates the new vagina. Now, in whenever we use a graft, your post operative use of vaginal dilators is usually needed to prevent the restenosis and complications are because there is no as such space. What we are creating is a new vagina by deliberately creating a space between the bladder and the rectum. And so high risk of bladder injury and bowel injury leading to fistulas is there and restenosis can occur if uh, routinely or if uh, as a regularly vaginal dilatation is not practiced by the patient. Next is androgen insensitivity syndrome. Here again, the say, vaginal self-progressive dilatation to be done as there is a vaginal dimple usually seen in these cases. Lower cyanovaginal bulb forms the lower part of vagina. And if it is not successful, then new vagina creation as in malarial ogenesis needs to be done. What is additionally required in the treatment in these cases is a when to do gonadectomy. Now, when, because it is a testis and it is undescended testis, Chances of uh, tumors such as gonadoblastoma and malignant tumors such as this germinoma are high, but usually these tumors are uh, occurring af after the puberty. And the advantage of keeping the gonads still puberty is it leads to the proper development of secondary sex characters in these uh, individuals. So what is recommended is gonadectomy to be done by age 16 to 18 for the prevention of these tumors not earlier because it provides a normal development of secondary sex character better than giving the exogenous hormones 
so this is the only exception androgen insensitivity syndrome is the only exception to the dictum of immediate gonadectomy whenever there is a y containing in the chromosome analysis in a case of primary amino and that you should remember that this is the only exception where gonadectomy needs to be done but it needs to be done after complete development of secondary sex characters because chances of having a malignant tumor are low and the benefit of having a proper secondary sex character development is much more after gonadectomy estrogen supplementation needs to be given if there is outflow tract obstruction in imperforate hymen what is needed is a hymenectomy no preoperative needle aspiration to be tried because it will otherwise convert a hematopulpus into a pyopulpus by introduction of the infection if it is a transverse vaginal septum and if it is a thick septum and the distance from the septum to the introitus is more than 3 cm then what is required is again a uh, vaginal graft like we do for a vagina neo vagina creation or vaginoplasty excision and pull through surgery is uh, to be uh, done only when it is a thin septum and when the distance between the septum to the um, this perineum is more less than or equal to 3 cm so this is important point now whenever these surgeries are done post operative dilatation again is required in these cases also otherwise there is a risk of going for restenosis cervical atresia is a difficult surgery laparoscopically utero vaginal anastomosis is tried tried but again the chances of restenosis are very high and ultimately these patients might end up in hysterectomy the first choice of surgery is always conservative laparoscopic utero-vaginal anastomosis or, or even laparotomy open surgery can be tried but uh, what is difficult in these cases is usually they do have already pelvic adhesions because of the severe endometriosis as there is only hematometra it first proceeds to hematosulfings and retrogrades spillage of menstrual blood leading to severe pelvic endometriosis and pelvic adhesions and that is why sometimes surgery is difficult in these cases in all these cases of outflow tract obstruction surgery to be done at the time of diagnosis only to avoid pelvic endometriosis with the pain as well as leading to the infertility in future now these are the disorders of ovary we have already seen dysgenetic gonad and primary ovarian insufficiency or premature ovarian failure these are the two groups in dysgenetic gonads commonest is turner syndrome 45XO, there can be a Turner mosaic. In pure gonadal dysgenesis, we have either 46XX or 46XY pure gonadal dysgenesis. Primary ovarian insufficiency is the terminology which is now being used instead of premature ovarian failure because failure indicates almost like it is a final uh, drop in the ovarian function. But it has been seen that many patients even after the diagnosis keep on ovulating or even pregnancies are reported and that is why better terminology which is being uh, thought to be at and uh, which is being used at present is primary ovarian insufficiency where there can be a chromosomal defect such as fragile X uh, mental retardation 1 pre-mutation can be there which is which might be the cause for primary ovarian insufficiency there can be an autoimmune element it can be because of chemotherapy or radiotherapy so how do we manage Turner syndrome is growth hormone needs to be uh, given to these girls to avoid short stature and to achieve a normal height. Next hormone which needs to be given is estrogen. It should not be started too early, otherwise it will lead to closure of the epiphysis and less height gain. And it should not be uh, started too late also, otherwise it will lead to delayed puberty. So it is usually recommended that it should be individualized in each case, but the usual duration which is given is 12 to 16 years to start estrogen. Always the starting dose should be lowest possible. Micronized estradiol can be given 0 0.25 or 0 0.5 milligram and then it should be increased gradually. Or conjugated equine estrogen 0 
0.625 milligram per day that is the initial uh, dose and then every three four months the dose is gradually increased till the dose stabilizes at the end of two to three years when the secondary sex character development is sufficient Medroxyprogesterone acetate should be started whenever a girl starts menstruating or it should be started one to two years after the onset of, I am sorry, it should be years, so one to two years after the starting the estrogens. 2.5 milligram per day throughout the cycle it can be given progestogen or it can be given in a better manner 5 to 10 milligram for the last 14 days of the cycle where the hormonal uh, levels will be same like physiological levels in a menstrual cycle. In these cases of Turner syndrome, we should watch for and treat see, uh, cardiovascular uh, problems such as there can be coagulation of aorta, aorta or there can be bicuspid aortic valve. Renal anomalies are common, liver disorders are very common and the, that is why it is said that the mortality is high in these patients because of all these associated disorders. Pregnancy is usually contraindicated because it is seen that mortality rate is very high because of these all these complications associated complications in women with Turner syndrome. Gonadectomy is to be done at the earliest whenever there is a 46XY pure, pure gonadal degenesis and Y containing pure Turner mosaic. The reason is here even at earlier age before puberty also there can be development of a malignant uh, tumor in the um, gonad and that is why it should be done whenever at the time of diagnosis at the earliest it should be done estrogen progesterone supplementation to be given as we have seen in turner that we start with the low dose estrogen increase the dose whenever a girl starts menstruating then we add progesterone or one to two years of estrogen therapy we add progesterone and it is given cyclically now in these uh, usually Turner mosaic as well as gonadal degenesis, usually height is normal and that is why there is no need to give growth hormone. Donor ovum and in vitro fertilization is usually uh, recommended for a successful pregnancy in these patients. Now whenever there is a hypergonadotropic hypogonadism as we have seen last class only, FSH is more and estrogen is less. A rare condition which can be there is 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency whenever a chromosomal pattern is normal. Chromosomal pattern is 46XX. And a girl presents with hypertension or electrolyte imbalance, which can even be life threatening. These girls also they need, along with steroid therapy, they do need hormone replacement therapy. If anovulation is a cause of amenorrhea, then we need to take care of underlying disorders such as thyroid dysfunction, hyperprolactinemia or treatment of PCOS. Pituitary and hypothalamic disorders where uh, surgery or radiotherapy will, might be required for CNS tumors. Counseling and reassurance is needed if there is what we say is most probable cause is a physiological delayed puberty which is a diagnosis of exclusion. Here, sometimes bone age might help us to differentiate it from other hypothalamic causes of uh, primary amenorrhea. Psychiatry support is needed whenever there is a severe uh, eating disorder such as anorexia nervosa. Along with HRT, HRT is a second line. First line is a uh, psychiatry treatment in these uh, patients with eating disorder, extreme uh, disorders leading to uh, primary amenorrhea. Lifestyle modification is uh, to be uh, practiced whenever there is a familial hypothalamic amenorrhea where there is an excessive exercise, strenuous exercise, severe stress which might be emotional or physical. All these are uh, to be managed with the lifestyle modification. Kalman syndrome is where GnRH secretion itself is uh, deficient and so these girls also do need hormone replacement therapy as turners in majority of the girls for the reproductive life. Thank you so much. With this, with this we come to the end of primary amenorrhea. If you have any doubts, please feel free to ask in comments. Thanks a lot.